Hi, I'm Anastasia Haunt. Hi, I'm Maximilian Haunt, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. One, two, three, four. The Brutally Delicious Podcast. Ooh, the Brutally Delicious Podcast. The Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hi, what's going on? Not much. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. I'm Bruce. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Anastasia. I'm Max. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. You guys are in Florida, right? Yeah, thank you. Sure. You We're guys from Florida, but we are in. Uh, we're in Wisconsin right now. Oh, okay. I spent uh, like 12 years in St. Pete. Wait. I don't know what part of Florida you're from. Yeah, we're from Fort Lauderdale. Oh, okay. So the opposite side of the, the state. I'm yeah, in yeah. Richmond, Virginia now, so. Okay, cool. Yeah. We're in, in between tours right now, taking a break in the woods in Wisconsin at this like little cabin. A break in the woods is beautiful. I need to do that myself. Yeah. <laughs> what was the... Uh, you guys just finished the tour with Filter, right? What'd that, how'd that go? Uh, yeah, we did two dates uh, with Filter. Um, and they, they were they were fucking awesome. We were able to. Uh, am I allowed to curse on you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, they were awesome, and uh, that it was like it was a, a two really really awesome dates. And then we went out with Mike's dad, and we did about thirteen dates with him. Um, and now we're gearing up to get ready for our Starbenders run, which is going to be so much fun. Yeah, actually, I saw you coming. I saw you coming to Richmond, so that'll be great. I'm going to try and get out there and see you. Yes, oh, okay. definitely. So you leave in two days. Are you preparing? You get some downtime at the cabin, but are you preparing for the next run, or how do you uh, get ready for that? So, yeah, yesterday we were kind of in, like, the decompression phase, and then today we're going to start talking about – because the set that we're doing on this Starbenders run is uh, – it's double as long as the one we just did with Mike's dad and with Filter. Right. Um, so we're going to go through and get, like, all of our songs ready, um, all the extra stuff that we're going to play, and uh, – the new single that we just announced, we're going to try to try to get that one ready and up to speed with the rest of the set and hopefully play that one also. It's going to be fun. Awesome. So I've watched the video for I'm Done, and I've actually been playing it a lot this morning. What a great song and an even better video. What's been the response to it so far? Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the response has been really good. We, uh, You know, it's not often on our songs that I have a chance to, like, be uh, singing lead. Holy shit. What? Um, what is that? I don't know. Maybe we should go in the back. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not often in our in our songs that I uh, have the opportunity to be singing lead. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, whenever you know, I wrote this song a while ago, and we were able to really like, uh, I was able to able to sing lead on it, and we. When we showed it to the label, they were like, this is fucking really cool and you should be, you know, doing that more. So we're like getting some stuff ready for the next cycle of songs too, where it's a lot more back and forth between me and Anna. And uh, yeah, we're really excited about it. Okay. So you guys are, are very theatrical and very, you know, themed. When you're writing, are you writing with the stage setting in mind? I think you got out again. Did you catch that? With our stage performance in mind, you said? Yeah, are you writing with the stage performance in mind? Like, are you writing the Sorry, song for how it's... Time? When you're writing, are you writing with the song in mind, like how it's going to come across on stage because you're so thematic and stylistic? I don't think we usually think about that while we're writing, but... Think it's definitely... It's very rare that something that we do on the record, like, does it... <laughs> it's very rare that something that we do on the record doesn't like translate that well live because we're such a live like I think subconsciously everything we do we, we're thinking about yeah like a live show I, but, yeah that's what my point was. yeah but we'll never like not do something because we're like how will we do that live we'll always just figure out a way to do it okay you know what I mean yeah yeah absolutely yeah 
And so I know this song deals with a lot of, uh, has a lot of meaning behind it and has a lot of a message behind it. But is there something you want your fans to walk away from after listening to uh, a song from The Haunt or a record or even your live performance? Um, I think we've always kind of had like the same message when we were when we were writing our stuff and we've always kind of wanted to create a uh, we've always wanted to kind of create an outlet and a safe space for everybody to be able to listen to our music and connect to it and you know I don't know it sounds a little cliche to say feel safer or feel uh, welcomed but that's kind of always what we've been trying to do with the band um Anna was Anna was bru- uh, was bullied like when she was younger and music was her outlet um, and we kind of always wanted the band to be everyone else's outlet too. That's like kind of always been our, our biggest thing. So music is, so we talk about here that. a lot on the show, music is really cathartic, right? Especially the, the more aggressive, heavier stuff and not only for the artist but for the listener as well. So I understand what you're saying but when you're writing it, do you ever feel like you've put too much of yourself into the songs if you're getting that personal? too vulnerable no Do you? I, I don't think that there's such thing i think that's like the best songs in ever are that so no i, I don't i don't think so yeah i think we would pray that we're putting our whole entire self into all of our songs yeah i think it's a lot easier to not i think it's a lot easier to uh to to write make-believe stories or sure and like uh, stuff like that i think the hardest thing to do is to put yourself into a song and uh, once you accomplish it, I think that that's what everybody is trying to do. Right. But uh, there's never a moment when we're like, holy crap, I should not have said that or I put too much. <laughs> <in> my... No, <laughs> no, because that's we've always kind of been the kind of way where we're like, yeah, like, you know, that's how we felt at that time. That was real at that time. That kind of happens to me in just like normal conversations because I'll just like say some crazy shit <laughs> um, or like just overshare and i think that's exactly what our songs are yeah oversharing that's, big, yeah it's a whole bundle of oversharing yeah okay so sticking with that theme then oversharing and all inclusive with your audience there must be some sort of uh connection then I'm, I'm sure you've gotten messages from people or stopping at the merch booth afterwards and said hey this song connected with me and saved me or changed me or helped me you have any of those stories yeah, I get DMs like that basically daily, which I think is so, like, insane. Because, like, of course, I think of myself as, like, I know, like, I can't, what is it called? Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. Like, on a smaller <laughs> scale. Like, I don't even believe that people are listening to my music, and then people are messaging me saying, like, it's helping them get through hard times, hard times or right. life yeah. or whatever's happening right now. So, it's, it's crazy. Do you ever feel any sort and of... also, like... Go ahead, sorry. I also, uh, the first tour we went on was uh, with Palais Royale, the first, like, major tour major tour we went yeah. on, and I was 15, so oh, wow. I was the same age as, like, all their fans, so our first, like, group of fans were the same age as me and can have kind of, like, grown the same age. Grown up with you, yeah. Gone through the same things, wow. so that has been huge, too. Right. You ever Back feel- then, I didn't have all the answers that they were looking for, <laughs> but I think I have a little bit now. Right. Do you ever feel any sort of responsibility then to your fans to carry that torch or bring that message? Yeah, yeah. I think so. We always try to we always try to behave in a way and and always try to uh, you know continue to create stuff in a way that we feel like would respect and honor like them to a certain degree. You we always wanted to be like, you know, we always wanted to be in in a position where people could look to us kind of for help, and we wanted to be that 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 kind of band. So. We always want to, like, portray ourselves that way, I guess, like, internally, you know? Right. Do you, um, I know you've released uh, I'm Done. Are you planning on following that new model of the bu- music business where you're doing, like, a single every four to six weeks? Are you planning on doing a, a release, you know, a full release sort of thing? Yeah, I can't speak to the future, honestly. Uh, right now, we're, like, still working with our team and stuff like that. But for right now, we are. We're releasing an EP by uh, doing a single every four to six weeks. We have one coming out this Friday called More. Um, I'm not sure when this will go up. So you're talking about tomorrow? Might have already, but uh, we, uh, it's going to be a, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be the probably happiest song we've ever written. Yeah, it's weird. It was written <laughs> as like a sad piano ballad, and then we kind of made it a summer feel-good Pop, pop punk almost a little bit, like rock. It's definitely the happiest thing we've ever put out, but... 
I'm so excited I for it. <laughs> I think it's good. It is taking it. What yeah. what summer needs? Yes. Yeah, what summer needs? <laughs> yes. So I very agree. very different than the uh, than poltergeist, and I'm done. Yes, definitely, definitely. And video wise, have you shot the video for it yet? It's not going to be as dark. We have, yeah. The video the video will be up with the song on the same day on Friday. Nice. Are you guys one of those yeah. bands that is always writing, or do you set time aside to write? Ooh, I think always writing. We set time aside to write sometimes when we're home because it's easy to like get lazy. Um, but I think that most of the time we we're like always writing. So whenever we go into those like pre set aside, pre like notched out writing times, we have a bunch of stuff written already. Mm. <clears throat> And so it's just kind of just talking through like what works and what doesn't. Right. So along those lines, then are you yeah. are you writing together like all in the same room, the traditional sense? Or are you kind of emailing stuff back and forth? I don't know how you're located geographically. Yeah, we live in the same house, so oh. um, we're writing together sometimes. But actually, more often than not, which is funny, is that we uh, we I think mostly write separately. I think that she mostly writes stuff, and then I'll I'll like do like because I do a lot of the production with Nick, mm-hmm. the drummer, um, and so we'll like when I when once I she brings it to me, that's kind of like where my hand gets in on writing on her songs, and then when we start like build, going through my songs, she'll come in, and when she goes to do vocals or when when we're still writing the song, she'll come in and help me write or finish some parts and stuff like that. But mostly it's like it's a kind of separate process, and then we help each other finish the song. But you still end up together, right? It's not the email thing. Because I think what I'm getting at is I think when you're doing stuff like that and you're together and you're bouncing ideas off each other, it comes across more organic and more honest than when you're just like sending files, you know, to your partner across the world. No, yeah, yeah. We, uh, as, as we're siblings and we still live in the same house. And so we're able right. to, uh, you know, uh, we have the, I guess, luxury of being able to kind of write together whenever we Feel like. make out the time to do it. Right. Yeah. We have a studio in our house and that's where we do most of the production for most of our songs. It's where we produced I'm Done. So um, it's, uh, yeah, uh, we have a pretty good situation going on, I think, as yeah. far as writing and production goes. And like I said, I think that makes everything such so much more organic and immediate and, and even honest. And I think as a listener, you can tell, you know, when stuff has been emailed back and forth versus where it was written right. together. I know that may, maybe you don't agree, but I, I think it sounds sterile when you do it that way. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And that you kind of like lose some of the life. Sometimes it depends. There are certain people that I feel like can, can, can do it because they, you can have that connection from far away, but it's much harder to create something that feels organic that way, definitely. Yes, and I think even, you know, like, music shouldn't be quantized to the extreme. It should be, have ebbs and flows, and you get that when you're doing it sort of the way you guys do yeah. it, right? Right, exactly. And I think it helps, too, like, the way that we write songs, we always start kind of with, like, an acoustic idea, whether it's on piano or acoustic guitar it always starts as like a very organic concept and i think that helps with the end product too right so what do you guys have next i know you got this run here what do you got for the rest of the summer or the rest of the year how we um, do? well I, we have a tour coming up that we can't like announce um but we will be opening for a band that is awesome two bands that are awesome and uh it's gonna be in um that starbenders run oh I, th- I think it starts now i think i found it starts so you're going to stay busy yeah. for a so while. Yeah, we, the, you know, the grind never stops, as they say. <laughs> that's beautiful. I think that's going to run me up to the end of my uh, my questions. Did I miss anything you wanted to cover? No, I don't think so. I think that was that was great. I think that's it. Yeah. And, um, follow us on Instagram. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Plug the socials. Plug yeah, the please. Socials. Plug all the socials. Um, we are the haunt. At we are the haunt on everything. Yeah. And... Um, We'll be announcing those tours and singles forever. Yes, and come see us on tour with the Starbenders. It's going to be so much fun. Beautiful. Thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. And we, uh, I will definitely try and catch you here in Richmond because I dig what you're doing, so it'll be great. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. Be well. Travel safe. Have a great tour. Bye. Bye. Thank All right, you. Take care. Thank you. Bye.